Hey guys, finally Sleeps here. Today, I'm gonna do something a little different. Uh, I haven't done any market videos in quite a while, and there's there's been some pretty good reasons for that. I, all the market videos that I've put out up to this point have, they, they always affect the market, and there the really hasn't been any shifts this season over last season, and I always prefer to keep uh, our, our market methods as private and exclusive as possible that way, because the more people that do anything, it lowers the value of the method. So when it becomes like a universal method, um, it just, it, deple it depletes the amount of profit that we can make. And every season we do the same kind of thing. We always start out with silvers and then we move into elites and then we lose the masters and fishing has been the thing. They've lowered auction limits because of some new methods that came out. Um, mass listing where people were trying to manipulate the overall value of cards. So they've lowered auction limits to kind of curtail that whole segment of the market. So this season, same as last year and the year before, we have been farming elites and now farming masters. And this is a method that uh, if, if you remember at the website or you know Twitch sub or you follow along on the Twitch stream, We've talked about this every year, um, the last two, three years. This has been a an exclusive method that we've done for months, and it's almost done. There's been a lot of requests. People hear us talking about farming elites, farming masters, and we get a lot of questions like, "Hey, thought you guys always thought you were you fished your players." Well, we do, we do fish our players, but farming is a completely separate thing that uh, is a daily method of making coins based off of the stock that you already have. And the last, say, month, it's it, depending upon how many players you had coming into it, it was good for anywhere from 20 to 100 million a day. And um, people are like, how, how do you, you mean that? Is it sales or profit? No, that's profit. Like straight profit, which is how a lot of us have gotten so bored and burnt out at this point. Because when you have more than a couple of billion in investments or players or actual coins uh, right now, and we're this late into the season, there really isn't a whole lot to do. So the whole method of farming masters and farming elites has kind of run its course and we've kind of milked it dry right now. So I'm going to post this. There's still the ability to do it for the next few weeks. So if you don't understand the method that I'm talking about, if you're not following along on the Twitch streams or on the Discord server or a member at the website and you're confused as to what farming is, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to explain it in the simplest terms possible and uh, hopefully you guys will get it. But first, uh, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, so you never miss when a video goes live. Make sure you watch the Twitch live streams. They they go live uh, like three, four days a week, usually around reset, but then the video on demands of the live streams do post to Twitter afterward, or Twitter. They post to YouTube afterward. So if you miss the live stream, you can always watch them afterward. And there is usually a pretty big portion of every live stream devoted to what's actually going on in the market, some of the methods. So this that I'm going to talk about, we've we've done all this on Twitch multiple times, which is is where a lot of the, the people that do follow along, that's why they all have half a million or half a billion coins right now or you know 2,000 players to sell, and they're all set for the rest of the year. So if you don't understand what farming is, let's get into it and let's talk about it. So... Farming versus fishing. Fishing is you have multiple players you put in. Let's say you have 10 of every player. You put two in the market and you're looking for a spike for those two so that you can sell the rest of your cards. Farming is a different method and we only farm elites and masters and you can do it at certain times of the year. The, the time that farming becomes 
a very affected, effective method for making coins is when there are enough players in the system that we have consistent sales for players across the board and we see the prices fluctuate from the morning to the night we see values going up and down so here's here's the the basic rundown of what it is so we're going to look and see this is stuff that is sold here in the last hour or so so we had four maitland niles went for seven hundred thousand a piece so we make we sold 700,000 times four, 2.8 mil. But if we go to search for Maitland Niles, we can buy him back for, there's several here under 600,000, 550, 557. So we're gonna buy back four, the same amount that we sold. We'll buy back four, two, three, for so what we say about 140,000 a piece in profit. Now what we're going to do is list those cards back into the market at the same exact thing that we just sold them for. Put them back in for 24 hours. Same thing, 700,000. Now that is farming those players. Now the the key to this is I didn't lose any players in the process. I used existing stock that I already have to farm back into the market for 140,000 profit per card. So four players at 140,000 a piece, uh, we just made 5.6 mil, or no, 560,000. 560,000 coins in profit on four cards never changed my stock. I had four Maitland Niles to begin with. I still have four Maitland Niles. I just have less money in them. So now with that money, I'm not gonna buy any extra cards. I'm just farming the stock that I have for extra coins. And we can look and see what else sold here. Let's go. So Ladera for 800,000. So we'll pick up another one. And hopefully we can find another one in that range. Let's see how much we made on that one. So 711. Can we see any less than 711? No, 711 is the cheapest. So we made 89,000 on that one card. And we'll do the same thing. We'll list this new one back in. where the other one sold. And we'll just keep doing that. So as the day progresses, anything that sells, I'll just turn over for the same value. I'll buy back what sold and turn it in for the new profit. Now, at any given time, if uh, something sells, let's say I would have searched for, Ladera sold for 800,000 and I did a search and I couldn't find one for 800,000, I would not spend 805 to get another one because it's not showing me any profit. I would just write down that name, Ladero, 800,000, and then maybe tomorrow when I go to search players, I'll take a look and see if he's come back down into that 700,000 range, and then I will buy him at the cheaper value and relist him at 800,000. The only time I would end up increasing the value on that card is if there's a, if it's I'm consistently getting sales and it's a card that I feel that I have enough profit already that I can invest a little bit more into a couple because if the numbers drop off, I don't want to get stuck with players that I have more money invested in. And all we're doing right now is taking our stock that we have and we're using it to generate more co coins. We are farming coins with the players that we have. Now this is basically all it is this is the entire method you put your you put your players in at a level that you see them selling at and as something sells you take the value that it sold at you buy another card cheaper than what you were put it back in and just consider the profit on what you did for just turning over that card turning over masters farming masters for coins basic method but it only works if you have a massive stockpile of masters to be able to fish them into the market to find the values that they're at. If you don't have any players to do this, 
then you have to invest in the players to begin with so that you have players to put in as bait for this method. Now, the, the question I get a lot of times is, okay, well, I have 10 million coins. What do I buy? Well, if you're doing this method, it's because most of us have thousands of masters to, to use. We have a plan that we work throughout the system. And at this point, if you have 2,000 masters, you're doing this and using the 2,000 masters to create stock. Now, there is a second method that you can work with this if you start from scratch. Now, that's what we're going to talk about now. So if you have the giant stockpile of masters, this is what you're doing. The, the one question that I'm going to get, and it's people are going to flood the comments with it, and I'm just going to ignore all of them because I'm going to answer it right now. People ask, how do I know what to list the cards for? You list the cards based on the value that you're buying them back at. So if you have a stockpile of players and you have a master that you bought four months ago and you don't know what to list it for, you don't understand what the value is, do a search in the market, find out what the lowest price is in there, see where they're selling at that range, add 100,000 coins to it, list it in on 24 hours and see what happens. Just put one in just to gauge where the part the the market value is what we're doing is we're looking for the low end to the high end in a 24 hour period so if a card has a 700,000 coin high end value during the day and a 550,000 coin low end value during the day you want to buy it at the low end sell it at the high end or you list them into the market in that gap and when it sells, then you buy it back lower, relist it at 24 hours. And if you have three to five of every card in at your farming, then when you buy back another player, depending upon what's going on with the queue, you can actually trigger another sale and start the flip process of farming your card in and having the ability to buy another back to recover the value of what you just had and trigger another sale until you deplete the stock that's in the queue at that time. You're not increasing the value of the card because the set rate is already there, like 550 to 700,000. So we're not trying to increase the value of the card. We're just trying to get into that pocket of where we can buy and sell back in that minimum range as long as we have enough players to put in the queue. That's all this is. Now, if you do not have the stock of players, we need to find where they're at and start from somewhere. So here's how we're gonna do it. So I begin as low as possible. So I'm looking for masters and I'll set my max value at 300,000 right now, just to look to see what's available. So we'll take a look at these cards and we're gonna note what is of it, what's out there. So Baumgartner, so I, all of these players that are at this 300,000 range, under three, we're going to avoid all of these players. Anything that we see under 300,000, we're going to skip. We don't want any of these players because they're not selling. Their values are so low that these are just training XP. A lot of it is uh, summer celebration players, but like Nolito, we're going to avoid him. Dembele, any of these things, Kalisic, Vanekin, these are dead cards this low. So once you go all the way through to 24 hours and you n take note on what's available and what's what's bringing in these cheap, cheap coins, we're going to increase our value. We'll go up 300 to 400,000. We already know it's in the, the under 300,000 range. So we're going to go up by 100,000 coins. Take a look again. Daka, Stepanenko, and we're going to do this all the way out and just add another 100,000 to the next set of cards until we see players, you start to see things that it's it's somebody you haven't seen before. It's it's someone that's not in that range. It's, it's a different kind of card, and that's the one we're going to buy and look for an increase in value. So all you're doing right here is trying to getting, you're gauging where it's at, what's available for what value, and moving forward. And once we go out 24 hours and we spin all the way through that, we'll go up 400,000 to 500,000. And again, right now you can do this up to about twice their XP value. A normal master's XP value, when I say XP value, I mean how much experience does that player have if you use it to train another player? 
90 rated start at 315,000. So up to 630,000, that's your range. That's kind of where I like to stay if I'm farming players. So I would only go up to that high. So I'm doing the same thing and I would end up spinning all the way out to 24 hours. It may take you a while to get all the way through here looking and you see all of these players. It's the same kind of stuff. There's no one here that's really standing out to me. I don't see anybody that's a little different. So we'll avoid most of these players. Now, if there's someone like, as you go through this and you start to get used to exactly the players that you're seeing, there will be a point where you see, you're like, ah, that's a player I have not seen pop up in the last like three, four days. At that point, that would be a player I would buy. When I see someone that's not the general fodder that fills the market search at this value, that's where I would grab it. Like, okay. Yomaz at 475. Let's take a look. That's a player that I haven't seen a bunch of. So we'll lower the value to let's do a 450 and see what's available. None. So we'll go up. Let's do 500,000. See how many there are. Did I spell it wrong? Uh, he's one of those that it doesn't pop up. That's why I can't find him in the search. Five hundred thousand. Is there any under five hundred thousand? Maybe I should have grabbed him. Okay, there we go. Four seventy-two, four seventy-five, four sixty-eight. There isn't a whole lot in that range. There was none at 450. So this is one I would invest in. How many do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 12, 15. About 15 to 18 cards at this value. So we're going to lower it down. We'll go 465. We're only going to buy three. We'll buy one at 465. Let's go up to 470. We'll buy two more. We'll just get three. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to list these three cards into the market. And we paid under 475 for these things. So I'm going to do my starting price at 500,000 and we'll do buy it now at 475. So we're, we're doing a hundred thousand coin increase in value on 24 hours on these cards just three we're using those as bait now if in the next 24 hours any of those sell i'll do the same exact method that i already did now here's what is going to screw some people up what i just did right there buying those three players i now have almost 1.5 million invested in those players it's going to take me a while to get back that 1.5 mil in profit turning over other cards so if you come into this with a stockpile of players, you don't have to buy players to find their player value. We've already bought the players months ago at a much cheaper value than 450, 475,000 coins. Right now, if you don't have that stock, you're overplaying for overpaying for players to use as bait. So if you're coming into this and let's say you have 30 to 40 million coins, you're going to have to buy a, a variety of players. Let's say you find cards in the 400 to 450,000 range and you buy cards that don't have a lot of a lot of players across the, the board. You're looking in there and you're, you're scrolling out. So let's say you see in a 24 hour period of a scroll, you might let's say you find a dozen players and that's it. Then I would start with three of those, increase my value by about 20%. So if you're if you're buying them at 500,000, you're going to go up to 600,000. You look for 100,000 coin profit in those three cards. Sell those three cards in a 24-hour period. If they sell, if they sell, you take the profit, you buy more. That becomes your 
you know the the profit from reselling those three cards that is the profit because you're rebuying the cards it's not the value so if i if i bought three cards at 500,000 and i can get those three cards to sell twice in a 24 hour time period for 100,000 more than i paid you just made 600,000 in profit it covered the cost of one and a half of the three cards so if you could do that two days in a row, those three cards are now free and doing it again the next day, it's the same amount of profit. So it's an additional 600,000. And that's on three cards that we've done. If you do that to 2000 cards and you increase the value. And now remember, sometimes you can take three cards, you can sell them, buy them back, sell them, buy them back, sell them and buy them back and put them back in the market all in a during a 24 hour time period. Now there is also in a 24 hour time period, if you list, let's say 800 different masters, you might only trigger sales on 50 of those 800. The other 750 that you have in the market, if they time out, you just do it again the next day. You just relist those players. They're just bait. So I hope that makes sense. This is how we are continuing to make a crazy amount of profit moving this late into the season is just this farming method. And again, this is the first time in three years I've ever put this into a YouTube video. Um, I don't, I, I, I'll leave this up. Uh, it'll be, it'll be dead in a month from now. So I may take it down once this method dies. Because it's, we're at that pocket right now where it's it's coming to an end. Most of us have been doing this for months. But uh, if you're new to this, don't, don't plan on this working forever. Once preseason gets announced, it's not going to be this easy. Uh, definitely once preseason is here, all market values are going to come down. So use it. See what you can do with it. If you've got questions, find me on Twitch. Come into a live stream. We'll explain everything. We'll do it real time if you've got questions. I think that's it. Uh, thanks a lot for hanging out with me tonight. I hope the uh, master farming works well for you. Uh, appreciate you guys. And um, make sure you check out the links. Follow along on Discord. And um, appreciate it. As long as you guys keep watching, I'll keep making videos.